So we're here at the Low Web 2012, and uh, you had a keynote. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, and really cool. So what are you talking about? Um, I was talking about the uh, the idea that we're all cyborgs um, and that that's not Robocop or Terminator or anything like that. It's just that every time when you interact with a piece of technology, you're kind of in a symbiotic relationship with it, right? You don't need any implants for it. Um, and that as we've evolved over time, there's been a lot of physical extensions of the self, um, but we're increasingly seeing mental extensions of the self. Um, and these are not really confined to a certain size or shape. So we see devices that are getting smaller and smaller. They're retreating in size while increasing in power. Um, and what does this mean? Um, and then I went into a bunch of different projects that we've been working on in terms of location. Once you have a mobile device, and once that phone can know where it is, what can you do? Um, I talk about the next evolution of the button, where we had solid buttons, where you had to rewire them in, in a computer if you wanted to change their function. And now you have liquid screens where there can be any amount of buttons where you can change them at will. And now you can draw a circle in the air on a map and when you go into it something will be triggered. So I went through um, drawing a circle around my house and automatically having the lights turn on when I got home because my phone knew where I was, getting location-based alerts, making a real-life game of Pac-Man where the city streets were covered with virtual points that you could get when you ran into them. Um, there were a bunch of different applications. Um, another one was taking all the geocoded Wikipedia articles and putting them into a, uh, a our database called Geoloki and um, bringing them to, to life. So when you walk around town, you suddenly get all these location-based pieces of information. Is that working? It's working f fine. It's How can you import Wikipedia in your app? How does it work? Ah, is it so, an API for...? Yes. So the API is called Geoloki and you can use it to import any data set with um, GPS coordinates and you can bring it to life, as in you can set a radius, you can set when it triggers, what information to deliver to the receiver when it triggers, and other things that you can do. Is that what you do or is that what Wikipedia does? So that's, that's what, what we do. That's yeah. what you do? Yeah, we so found... find a way to take the whole world's information and make it yeah. geo relevant? Yeah. Yes, all of the Wikipedia articles that had location-based information in them. Yeah. And how do you how do you know that? How do you is there like a, a tag for that? Uh, yeah, yeah. There there's already. a location tag. Um, mm -hmm. We used a third-party API called InfoChimps, and they made um, a nice slice of the data set for us um, that had all the nice geo-formatted data. Uh, but you can do that with any location-based data set. Um, so we've been starting this as a startup for a number of years. We've had, um, you know, the biggest issue is making an algorithm that allows you to get this information but keep very good battery life. So that's been our main uh, focus for the past few years. Um, and two months ago we just got acquired by Esri. So now developers have access to a lot more data. We'll be integrating with their system in July 2013. So what does Esri do? So Esri is a global mapping company. They're based in Redlands, California. They're, uh, they have about 3,000 people. They, um, they have been traditionally a very amazing enterprise company. They have geocoding and routing, demographic information, lots of maps. They serve map tiles to all different countries all over the world. Um, but they're always behind the scenes. Um, starting in July, we'll be opening up a lot of their data and a lot of their tools to more than just geographers and more than just researchers so that developers can use all of this stuff, including location-based notifications, inside their apps and do interesting things like um, determine whether uh, to send a message to somebody if a train is coming near them um, or determine whether to alert someone if someone is having a health condition. Um, so there are all these sorts of things that people can do with the software um, after we release it in July. Cool, so is it fair to say that uh, technology is kind of has been there, was, was kind of there, but people aren't really using it, right? Uh, a, uh, a whole, like we uh, are like not really <laughs> super awesome cyborgs yet. No, no. It te technology takes a long time. It's not that it's not that technology isn't ready. It's that humans are not ready for technology. Really? Yes. Um, it's always been this way. It's and it's good because too much technology too quickly is difficult. Um, if you think about the first, the very first elevators that were installed in New York. Um, they went too fast and people's eardrums started having pressure and uh, so they said we have to slow down the elevators and so the elevators were made artificially slow because people's eardrums could not handle it. Nice. Um, and so it's the same with technology. Uh, there are privacy concerns, there are all sorts of regulations that we need to get through and there's the idea of you know carrying things in your pockets which 
only a few years ago was a very strange idea. Talking on a phone in public was a very strange idea. So we as humans take some catching up to do. Um, also, uh, the other thing I talked about in my speech is that every single device and every single system right now has a different protocol. It's very difficult to make these devices communicate with each other. So we kind of have this modern day Tower of Babel where we need to have something that, you know, text messaging didn't really come about until SMS united all the different phones and carriers and, and types of devices. We need the same thing for the Internet of Things, where we have everything speaking a different language and we need a translator. Nice, and we don't need to worry about privacy. I'm oh, just <laughs> yeah, we should definitely worry about privacy. But there are, there are very interesting things you can do. First off, if your location data empowers you or helps keep you safe, then that's completely different. You want to share that with something in debt. Um, when you share your location right now, you either share or you don't. You don't know what you're sharing, you don't know for how long, and you don't often know with who you're sharing information. Um, uh, a, more, uh, a more robust form of information sharing is when you open up an app, it says, you are going to share this type of location information when you get to this place for this long. Here's what will be done with it, and that's it. And here's what you will get back in return. So it's a social contract where you either get something better than your location return, or you get something that um, is at least the equivalent of you giving away your data. Cool. So there's all these talks about startups and robots. Global goes around and says, this is cool, this is cool, this is yeah. cool. But uh, Badu, they had a party, mm -hmm. and I tried their app, and there was a bunch of people nearby, but I don't think any of them were their party. So like, uh, wouldn't it be like, some things are missing, right? So it'd be nice that mm -hmm. you just put it up and see who's, 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 who's where. And, does that have anything to do with what you're interested in? Well, that would be nice. Um, augmented reality heads-up display that shows you the people around you. And um, there was a company called The Astonishing Tribe that made a beautiful demo video of this and put it on YouTube and got a few million views, where you as a person select the social profile that you want people to see when you walk down the street and share it only with certain demographic of people. And then they can see whatever information is on you with facial recognition. That works okay if you're in a well-lit environment, if you have a good internet connection, and the real world doesn't often have a good internet connection and is not very well lit all the time, especially in social situations. So the thing is, since 30 years ago, people have made social networking apps, right, where I want to see people in my area. The problem is that the best way to meet people in your area is that people already know people that they know, or you ask your friend and they recommend somebody to you, or you go to a conference and just meet people. You don't need this thing in the way. That's something that humans should do. That's a human creation, not uh, a robot creation. So we will keep seeing these apps, and we will keep seeing them fail. You know, 30, 40 apps a year, copies of copies of copies. They're not going to go anywhere. So you now, don't think that the cool. next web, uh, everybody's going to walk around with the kind of like glass and uh, figure out who's who? Because it's difficult to go close to the badge every time and say, can I stare at your badge for a second? Well, that would be really nice. But that only works at conferences. Um, in the real world, that would be kind of scary, and people would not like that because also, like, people just want to walk down the street in the real world. Um, so, it would be useful, yes. Um, I don't think Google Glass will be around in a way that's solid enough next year that we'll be able to use it. Um, but at some point in the future, that will be interesting. I want to make an ad blocker for Google Glass so that I can block out advertisements. Um, somebody did this, Steve Mann did this in the, in the 1980s where he didn't want to see other people's messages, he wanted to see his own. So he used image recognition uh, to recognize rectangles, cancel them out, and get text messages on billboards. So he walked around and saw his own information on the streets around him. Have you met him? I haven't met him yet. He um, he lives in Toronto and he hasn't he taken... He had trouble in the Paris once. I can see why. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, There's well, just some story about something it's a violation of privacy yeah. to take photos of people. And yeah. There was a message on the door, so... Yeah. 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 French law is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He, he asked for it. What, what, what do you think about uh, what's it called? Uh, how, how do you, why does it take so much battery to do all this geolocation? When I take out my Google Maps, for example, it's not already. It needs to load. It needs to. Yeah. Couldn't, so it's not possible with these cell phones to just track you constantly all the time. You need to like get yeah. it to track you every minute or something. You can have it track uh, pretty well, maybe every hour. Like you could say, I can track every 10 seconds and then send it to the server every hour. 
but really um, you're going to run your battery jam quite quickly because you're opening up a connection and closing a connection, calling uh, information up to a server, calling it down, calling it from GPS, calling it down. Um, if you want to do anything interesting with location, you need a server, you can't just do it on your phone. So um, if you want anything accurate, you need to have higher resolution. Um, so really our tracking profile ramps up and ramps down the GPS based on content that you are subscribed to nearby. And that way it's not always on. If you want to do real-time tracking, you should bring a battery pack, uh, and then you can get beautiful trails of your data over time and visualize them. Um, are, are people that optimize these, uh, G is it GPS and modem? Is that the two ones? GPS and servers. And server stuff? Yeah. Online stuff? Yeah. People need to optimize, right? And they are. Uh, it's just that this only has limited battery, right? And GPS takes a lot of power. Um, think of it like... Um, He's trying to find the satellites. Yeah, all the time. And there's eight, uh, there's eight satellites that it can access. So it's not going to be always accurate all the time. Like, um, you know, an actual physical dedicated device has um, like 12 satellites that it can access or more. Um, so there are limitations. But this is the best we can do. Um, so really working within those constraints and making algorithms is what we've been working on for the past few years. Are you an ingress? An ingress? Did you get an ingress invite? No. The Google they launched some kind of game. Uh... Oh, ingress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard about it, right? I have, yeah, yeah. What do you think is going on there? I think it's a good idea. We'll see what happens. Okay. I'm a late adopter, actually. I wait, and then I and then I do something. Or uh, usually I look at stuff in the past, and if it's worked in the past really well, then I yes. Um, if it hasn't, then I kind of look and wait and observe from the sidelines, and then get into it later, um, so that I can at least stay objective for a little while, and then get into it. So I have two views outside and inside. But it'd be scary. It'd be awesome if, if, if like 50% of everybody in the street all the time was running around in a game, like virtual reality. Or, or yes, stuff. there would be a lot of car accidents. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be awesome, no? It would be pretty cool. Yeah, and, and I think that you know, as we have. Um, glasses on our face and actually allow us to do that versus having to look at a device all the time. It's going to be a lot easier to a lot easier to interact with reality um, because you're not having to constantly context switch from device to reality. The whole idea of augmented reality should be just transparently giving you minimal information to augment what you're doing, not to get in the way and. Um, throw a bunch of polygons in your face that look really bad. So 2013 is just about to be here, it's pretty awesome time, no? I mean, Should be stuff good. are going on, right? Between 2013 and 2015, it'll be really interesting. Could be some crazy things going on. Cool. Well, thank you.